Well, good afternoon. Beautiful day today. Hope that you've had a chance to enjoy it because uh, once again, uh, there is weather in the forecast. And I was reminded uh, in a conversation earlier today that, that now, of course, because of the storms we've experienced, every time you hear a bad weather report, it just kind of immediately uh, sort of uh, is tense and it doesn't necessarily mean that. Uh, so hopefully we'll all be able to, uh, to be okay, to be okay through this as well. Today, this weekend, we are celebrating the day of Pentecost. Uh, if last week, uh, as we celebrated the Ascension, is the conclusion of the season of Easter, this is the beginning of something new, of a new day, uh, of uh, the time of the church, uh, the time of us and our discipleship, and all that that means, and all of the possibilities uh, that come with that. And we will talk more about that as well. Uh, the flowers you see here behind me on both sides uh, from the services on Thursday for Bob Rasmussen. And of course, we keep that family close in our prayers again today. We begin our worship service as we give thanks for the gift of our baptism, and there is a response uh, for you, which you'll see uh, on your bullet. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look. Here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you, through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Our opening hymn is number 399 in the Red Hymnal. Mm -hmm. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth into the world. 
Send us the, this spirit. Transform us by your truth. And give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elam El Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Psalm 104, beginning at the 24th verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you had made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Cre creeping things innumerable are there living things, both small and great. There goes the ships and la vivatan that you form to sport it in. These all look to you, 
to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another children's message. I am guessing that you're noticing that I have a different hair color. My youngest is graduating from high school on the 19th, and I thought that maybe I should liven up my hair a little bit. So that is the reason for the pink. Now, this weekend, uh, we will be celebrating Pentecost. And Pentecost is the day when God made church. So we're going to read this book that is by Rebecca McLeod Hutto and illustrated by Stephanie Haig. All right. We all gather and wait. Jesus is gone and we are nervous. Everyone is curious to meet the one that Jesus would send us. The room is dark. Men, women, old people, young people, and animals wait. Wait for something to happen. Suddenly, the animals move with excitement. What's that noise? It grows louder. It feels like wind. And it pounds like drum beats. It fills the room loud and full. Then the room grows brighter. Something hot and blazing shines on us. Darkness is gone. Fire fills the cold space. Now we feel warm inside our bodies. Smiles paint our faces. We all know something new is happening. We feel our hearts change inside. Is this what Jesus promised? A new sound comes, words, words like raindrops fall across the room. You can see all the words falling like rain. Some with loud sounds, some with quiet whispers. Words like drum beats. Words that tiptoe through the air. People crowd around. They hear the words. They recognize the languages. Something new is happening. The Holy Spirit has arrived. Everyone around me begins to ask questions. Who is this Holy Spirit? What is happening? Why do we feel so different? Why do we hear so many languages? Peter stands. He walks around looking at each of us. I wonder, is he going to speak? Then Peter opens his mouth and he starts to preach. His powerful voice fills the spaces around us and between us. Friends, something new is happening. Jesus has given us a wonderful gift. Don't be surprised if you all start to preach and dream too. Young and old, men and women, we are all called to something new.
God is changing us so we can see old things in a new way. We all listen as Peter tells the story of God's love in Jesus. He reminds us all what Jesus taught us. We hear again how Jesus loves us. We remember when Jesus healed our friends, told us stories, and shared good news. We listen as Peter describes the day, that horrible day when Jesus hung on the cross, and we remember how sad we were. The dark clouds covered the sky, the earth shook, and Jesus died to save us. But our sadness did not last forever. Peter reminds us that that soon there was joy, laughter, and dancing. Jesus came back to us. God raised him from the dead and gave us new life. We all hear the word Peter preaches and the Holy Spirit changes us. The rivers of baptism pour out and we feel God's love. A love for us, our families, our friends, and even people who are far away. People, people everywhere all hear this good news. We all begin this new life together. We become a new family. We share our things, we break bread together, and we worship God. This is what we call the day of Pentecost, the day when church was born. Men and women, boys and girls, people from everywhere, we are all filled with the Holy Spirit as we worship Jesus, alive and risen. Alleluia. And that is the end. So that describes to you what Pentecost is. It's when God made church. And you are part of church, and I am part of church, and all of God's creation is part of church. It's not really a building. It's all of us. And that's what we're celebrating. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for making church, for giving us a way that we can connect to one another, we can share your love, we can tell you how much we love you, and we can feel that Holy Spirit within us. We ask you to be with all those who are sick, who are lonely, and who need church in their lives. Give them an extra dose of happiness and joy and peace. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have blessed us with. In your name, amen. All right. I hope you have a wonderful Pentecost celebration, and I hope you have a great week, and I hope I get to see you soon. Take care. The Holy Gospel for the day of Pentecost is recorded in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord, Jesus said. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks, where are you going? Because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. 
For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we come on this festival of Pentecost to be reminded of this spirit that you give us, this hope, this gift of faith and love, and we pray, O Lord, that that spirit would come upon us again and renew our hope in you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, my childhood was really governed by something that happened most every Sunday night at 7 o'clock in the evening when we turned to NBC and Tinkerbell flew across the screen and scattered her magic dust and this tremendous uh, hour of joy came upon us, right? The, the world of Disney in color, that's what it was called in the 60s, the wonderful world of Disney as it was called in the 70s. I was really a child of that. And, 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 and I loved it because of course there was this sense of optimism and I was a very introverted child, really still kind of am. And I, am, and I loved to bury myself in, in books and in fantasies and in fairy tales and in all of that wonderful kind of stuff. And, and I know, of course, that as I was growing up in the 60s, there was a lot of hard reality going on in the world at the same time. A lot of distress, uh, a lot of division, a great war, lots of trouble. But there was this escape for me, and it mattered to me, and, and still does. And even now as I have grown up and, and I am fully aware and live, I hope, every day in the reality of the world in which we live, that, that, that child that I was, that had that optimism and those dreams and those, that imagination, I have always tried to keep that part of me alive and to treasure it because it matters. It, it matters in this world to have hope. It matters in this world to be optimistic and open to the possibility. And these last three weeks have been such a great and perfect reminder of why that matters. Right? Because, because the world feeds on the opposite. The world feeds on our pessimism. The world feeds on our despair. There's great industry in the world had, that has figured out that it can make a lot of money off of reminding us of how bad that we have it and using that against us and politicians who know how to play on those fears and that disappointment. And I've seen, uh, interestingly enough, real examples of that uh, in, in this past week. Right? It, people who now need significant help, people who have to rebuild their homes and their lives, but people who are afraid to reach out from that, for that help, people who are afraid to take that help when it is handed to them because they don't actually believe that anybody can help them. Right? People have gotten just so lost in, 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 the, in the suffering and in, 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 in their grief that, that they've lost it. And I, and I think of the families now around us who will have to rebuild so much from scratch and how important it will be for them to have hope over this next year or two while they try to rebuild their lives, their homes, try to, to get back on their feet again, how important it will be for them to have that vision that always moves them forward. And so this year as I was getting ready to preach on Pentecost, which now I've done a couple of times over the course of the last 31 years, I was really drawn to this one particular part of, of the passage, right? Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. I thought, this really is the essence uh, of Pentecost. This is the gift of faith that has come into the world. That when we get caught up in the whole speaking of tongues, you know, the, the visions of the, of the fire and the rushing wind and all of that stuff, all of that drama, that's really wonderful. But these lines that Peter chooses to remember from the prophet Joel really do capture the whole point of this. 
which is that this moment and every moment from here forward now will always be about this sense of having a vision, of dreaming a dream, of having a hope, of looking forward. That is the gift of Pentecost. That is the point of the giving of the Holy Spirit, that we should be like that. Now, let's say a couple of things really clearly right here at the beginning, right? Dreams are not the same as wishes. I had lots of wishes when I was a little child. I still have lots of wishes. Every time I go buy my lottery ticket, I wish that this will be the one, right? I mean, but, it, but wishes are, we all know this, wishes are a little self-centered. Wishes are things for us, right? Even if we wish things for other people, it, it, that's not what this is. Nor are these dreams fantasies, right? These dreams are not like pictures that we're painting, these visions of which the prophet Joel speaks. They're not like, you know, the way we, we picture monsters or terrible things. I love this line in the psalm tonight, right? The, this line about the sea monster, the great sea monster Leviathan, who it turns out that God made just for the fun of it. And I, I think about a God who makes sea monsters just for the fun of it. And I think that's a little different than the way we sort of fantasize about who God is. Because the, the thing about dreams, the things about visions, is they're not about changing the past. They're not about, gee, I wish I could make that thing that happened go away. I wish I could look back and somehow repair what was, nor are they about changing the present. They're about how we see what lies ahead, how we move forward into the next thing that is to come for us. That's what the prophet is talking about when he says, your young men shall have visions and your old men shall dream dreams and your daughters shall prophesy. It, it is about what we see in front of us and how we imagine what's going to happen next. There are a lot of really wonderful things happening around the story of Pentecost in the text that we read here. And, and one, of course, is that it happens on Pentecost at all. Pentecost is a, is a festival of harvest. It, it is a time when the Israelites come together to celebrate all that God has given them. I always think of harvest as a celebration of dreams come true, right? You put your seeds in the ground and you nurture them and you care for them and you water them and you hope that the weather is good for them, but you really don't know until the fruit shows. And then what a celebration. Once upon a time when I put a seed in the ground, I dreamed that it would become a thing. Harvest is the celebration of those dreams coming true. And it is a reminder to us of how grace works. That if we plant seeds in hope, that in time we reap the harvest of our planting. Now I know that there are questions that come immediately when you start talking about dreams. One of which is, why haven't my dreams come true? I mean, if faith is about this vision, this optimistic vision that God has given me of the possibilities of the future, where is that? What have we been waiting for, for two millennia now, for more than that, for God to deliver? Paul uses this really important language for us in his letter to the Romans. He says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves. That, that these visions and these dreams that the Spirit gives us aren't waiting. They're happening. That we are in that moment, right, when we're waiting, when we're watching the dream come true, and in that process, they tell me, there's a certain amount of pain and struggle. That it isn't just all nice and lovely, but in that pain and struggle, something is happening. 
Life is coming, is emerging, it's right there, and we live exactly in that moment, have always lived exactly in that moment now. Paul says to the Hebrews, we hope for what we do not see. The fact that we haven't seen it yet is why we have hope. It's not about what we are limited with. It's not about the things that are just right here. It is about the possibilities that lie within and underneath all that can be, all that is becoming. That's the point of faith. And then it occurred to me too also that, that in this conversation about dreams and visions, the question is, yeah, well, who interprets those? Because dreams are not always clear cut, right? Dreams aren't science. They're not facts, they're metaphors, they're visions, quite literally. And how do we know that, that one interpretation of those is true and, and not the other? And how do we know what exactly it is that we believe? And the, the thing is, is that it's really not hard at all to figure that out, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into the truth, for he will not speak of his own, but he will speak what he hears, he will declare to you what God has already said. And once upon a time, we came to this font, and God spoke his truth to us. That we bore the very sign of his love everywhere we go, and that we will always be his child, period, end of sentence. The key to unlocking the vision of what will be happened when what was, was done to us. That's all we need to know. And when you hear someone saying, well, this is the vision of what God has for the future, I invite you to remember the words that were spoken over you at your baptism and ask, does that line up? Does that match? Because the Spirit only speaks the truth that God has already spoken. And the truth that God has already spoken was spoken on the cross Father, forgive them. And the spirit and the word that God has spoken was spoken on Easter Sunday when the tomb was burst open. That truth defines the visions and the hope that we are called to have and to live by. The other great part, of course, of the Pentecost story is it contains one of the most humorous moments in the entirety of the Bible. After Peter and the disciples speak in all of these different languages, the crowd is amazed and they wonder how could this possibly be. And of course, someone assumes that they must be already in, been in the communion wine all morning long. Skepticism does that. Humanity does that. Confronted with things we cannot imagine, cannot understand, we dismiss it. Sin does that. Sin is always pessimistic. Sin always says, how can that possibly be? How could God possibly love us? How could there possibly be a better future? How can we possibly get through this? And the Holy Spirit says, well, why not? Why not imagine a new world? Why not believe in a better future? Sin keeps us imprisoned in our despair because we believe in it more than we believe in the promise of God and a spirit that says anything can be if you just believe. Which brings me back to Tinkerbell. Right? A wish she taught us when we were children is a dream that your heart makes. Now, I've grown up a little bit over the years, and I've come to understand that that's not quite what Joel, the prophet, was speaking about. I've actually come to understand it in a much more meaningful and powerful way. Because in the end, it's not the content of the dream, so much as it is the act of dreaming itself. It's not what you're 
hoping for. It's that you're hoping. That's the power of faith to change lives and to change the world. That we have hope at all. That we have not quit. That we have not given up. That we push forward. That's what we're here for. We are surrounded by too many around us who have given in to despair and lost their dream. We are called to bring to life the power to dream again. There was a, this last year, a new Disney movie came out called Wish, which I think is the perfect title for a Disney movie. And it was about the dreams that people have. And this king who guards their dreams, he takes these dreams and he guards them and every occasionally he'll make those uh, dreams come true. But there's a beautiful song in the middle of this movie and it has these words. It says, so I make this wish to have something more for us than this. And I believe that it's just that simple. Not that we should have some grand aspiration of perfection or wonder, but to have faith is to trust and hope that this is not all that there is, but to believe in a God who says, there's something more. There is something more. In Jesus' name, amen. The hymn is number 405. Let's uh, sing the first and last verse. Living together in trust and hope now, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. Gracious Father, we bless you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. 
as it came upon the disciples on that first Pentecost, now let it come upon us now. With power and light, let it transform us, O Lord, so that as we are in this world, we are not of this world, but that in all things we bring your hope and your grace to all of those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today, O Lord, for your church that it would be your voice in the world, that all would hear from us your gospel, your message of love and salvation. O oh Lord, let us be your instrument, that all may see and know what you have done for us in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in this world, we desperately need the power to dream and a vision of hope. So teach us, O oh Lord, to believe in the things that the world has forsaken, to believe in peace, to believe in justice, to believe that we can live together with those who are different than us, to believe Lord, that we can serve all our neighbors in their time of need. Help us, O oh Lord, to believe in the power of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we lift up to you our friends and neighbors in need, and we pray for those who are sick and those who are hospitalized. We pray for those who are recovering from surgery and those who battle disease. We pray, Lord, for those who grieve, that they should know and believe in this promise of life that never ends. We ask, Lord, that you would be with all who we name before you here now, aloud and in the silent prayers of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these prayers, O oh Lord, we give to you because we have caught this vision of your grace and mercy in our Savior and Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share God's peace with one another. You may be seated as we gather this evening's offering. The hymn is, um, what is the hymn? There we go, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. It's number 800.
risen one. You call us to believe and to bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. And so it is that we come to see this vision of Christ here in bread and wine. And we remember that on the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks to God and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, he said, and remember me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God and he gave it to them to drink. And he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, he said, and remember me. And so we pray together in the way he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you are communing in your pew this evening or joining us now in the live stream, receive with me this gift of the grace of God. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and to share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and our friend. Amen. Let's see, did they give me announcement slides? They did. I, okay, so I did mention the flowers are from the services for Bob uh, on Thursday. Uh, again, we uh, just continue uh, as we're, um, we're just hanging in here now till we know that everybody has uh, completed their cleanup and recovery work. Uh, so uh, FEMA is here. They are upstairs. Uh, they are here from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. So if you know folks who are still going through that process, we just want to keep reminding people that uh, they are here to help and they, they do sincerely want to help. And, and if people are finding that uh, they're sort of hitting a roadblock. There may just be a paperwork snafu. It's not necessarily mean they're not going to get approved. And so we want to encourage folks uh, to be um, um, persistent uh, as they work through things with uh, FEMA to get the assistance they need. Uh, we are looking for volunteers to help man the desk. We're going to stay uh, here regularly. And there is a um, link on the e-blast and uh, a link on the Facebook page where you can sign up for just a couple of hours. And again, just to kind of sit and receive people as they come in and make sure that they find all of the things that they need. Uh, uh, we are looking for donations in particular now, gas and grocery gift cards are things that can be really helpful as people again are transitioning now uh, into the next sort of phase of their recovery and are getting settled. Uh, and prepared for kind of the longer haul now as they go through the rebuilding process. Vacation Bible School. Oh, look, I got fonts. That's nice. It turned out really nice. Vacation Bible School is the 24th to the 28th of June. Yes, we will have VBS here uh, in the midst of all of this as well. So uh, if you know of young people, uh, sign them up and, and get them here. It will be a wonderful week. I think it will be especially a really joy-filled week for us. Uh, this year as well and uh, so fun thing to volunteer for just come and laugh and play with the children uh, it will make your heart uh, light and good and with that then let us bow our hearts to god and go with his blessing the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine on you with mercy and grace the lord look on you with favor and give you peace amen our closing hymn, number 400, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. Can we do first and last verse? Okay, first and last verse. <laughs> Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.